Hello YouTubers, Hammy Tech, Hammy Technoid here. And today's video, I'm going to take a look at the Phase Linear Parametric Equalizer Model 1100 Series 2. And uh, we are, I'm going to discuss some of the differences between a graphic equalizer and a parametric equalizer, which this one is. Uh, this model came out in about 1979. It was considered a high-end model, and it went for about $600, brand new, okay? And uh, I got this unit f from eBay, and believe me, these are fairly hard to find. These are a hard-to-find unit on eBay. I was doing a search again, and I could not find one. So I really lucked into this one, and I paid, oh, I'd say less than half of what they went for when they were new back in 1979 and I'm going to show you a price comparison sheet here this little sheet here that shows if we, for six hundred dollars back in 1979 it was, it's double that now in 2016 so yeah I got a pretty good bargain I think I've connected the unit up into a system and tested it and it works uh, I don't have it connected to power now or system it's just sitting on a rack in my uh, digitizing studio so it's kind of here just collecting dust but I do intend on hooking it up to something eventually someday so uh, let's get down to business. What I wanted to explain was first the difference between, say, a graphic equalizer and a parametric, which is what this phase linear model is. Um, if you were to have a graphic equalizer, all you would have would be these sliders here. That's all you would have. You have sliders, and they would be fixed at the frequency on each slider. Like this one is set at 63, this one is set at 250, this one is set at 1K, that one is 4K, and this one is 16K. Okay, those would not be changeable. You would be stuck with those frequencies, and all you would be able to do is either turn them up or turn them down. In this case, plus 12 or minus 12 dB. Okay, so that's where you would stand with a plain graphic equalizer. And they kind of spice them up by adding more bands. So this one is just a five band here. But because it is a parametric, it is so much more than just a graphic equalizer. Now, with these controls up here, these controls are labeled bandwidth slash octave. Okay. And with the bandwidth slash octave controls, you can control the width of the, the, the frequency band that each control, the slider, will affect, okay, and how it will affect it. So 0.18 represents 0.18 octave, and 1.8 represents 1.8 octave. And let me give you a little lesson on octaves and frequencies, okay? Anybody who knows music understands octaves, okay? And then octaves are directly related to frequency. So you have high octave instruments and you have low octave instruments, the bass, the cello, and some of the violas. Those play in the low octaves. And then you have the higher octave instruments, the piccolo, the flute, um, the, the uh, French horn, those kind of things. But what a octave is, what an octave is, is the frequency band. And here's a little secret to know which octaves are what. Every time you double a frequency, you just went up one octave. Okay? So this here, this number 63, that represents an octave. That bandwidth is centered on the 63 hertz. And then the next one is 250 hertz. So guess what? You just went up two octaves. So if you double 63, it's 126. And you double 126, it's 252. So that one is 250. Okay? And then the next octave up would be 500. And the next octave up from that would be 1K. And boom, there you are, 1K. So you'll see this is a this is a two octave jump on each of these sliders. So you've got 1K and then 2K up is the next octave and then boom this control is 4K. Okay, 4K on that one. And then the next octave up is 8K and then boom 16K. That's this octave. So there you are. Now, so you're limited 
If you were to stuck with this five band equalizer, you would be limited. But this is a pedometric equalizer. We are far from limited, okay? So we can take this these controls, these bandwidth controls, these octave controls, and we can tweak it. So this guy here is 0.18 of an octave, or we can make him 1.8 octave. So the control is very wide at 1.8, but it is very, very picky and narrow at 0.18. And that is one of the beauties of a parametric is you can pick the frequency, well, not just the frequency, but the amount of the frequency it's going to control, the width, okay? That's why they call it bandwidth. So then the next thing that makes a parametric so nice is you're not stuck with that 63 hertz. You can change that. This little dial here, this frequency, this guy, can be turned down to 21 hertz. You see it says 21. So your center frequency can be 21 hertz. That is a very low frequency. And you see each of these dials is center detented. So it's center detented at the frequency that's labeled on the band. So at mid center, I'm using 63, but I can bump it up all the way to 190. So I, this, this control here, this first one, can control between 20, or should I say 21, all the way up to 190. And that makes quite a bit of control on that one slider. And then the next one up goes from 83 to 750. And that is a lot of control on that one slider. And then the next one goes from 330 to 3K. And the next one goes from 1.3K to 12K. And then there's the last one, which is 5.3K to 48K. 48K, nobody can hear high as 48K, but that's what the control allows you to do. And see, you can overlap or underlap controls and pick out that exact frequency you want to notch or you want to boost. You know, you can notch a frequency. What you're doing is you're taking that frequency and say, I want to notch 60 hertz. I want to notch 60 hertz right out of my, my song because it's too deep and I'm picking up some hum. So what I would do is I would turn the, the bandwidth down very small and then I would turn the slider way down, minus 12, and then I would mid adjust this back a little to get 60 because center part is 63. So I'd turn it back just a little and I could listen, run a test signal and I would be able to notch that frequency down 12 octaves, octaves or 12 decibels. So yeah, that's that's how nice the controls are on a, on a pedometric equalizer. And specifically to the phase linear, you see here in the middle, it's got level control so you can balance it and you can balance it to the to the uh, level of your uh, equi equipment with with and without the uh, the uh, frequency boost. So you can bypass it then, and you can have it with the EQ, or you can bypass it and not have EQ. And plus, it has a tape monitor, and then it has the on-off power switch. So it's a very very useful equalization device. And uh, eventually, I'm going to hook this up into a system somehow. And I might run a song through it and let sh let you hear how the bandwidth and the and all the other things affect the music. So right now I'm it. Uh, my mind is telling me it's time to shut down this video because I've been talking for a long time. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, and until next time, see you later.